As we look back on the 60 years since the March on Washington, we turn to the people who were there. Two years after winning the Academy Award for her role in West Side Story, Rita Moreno sat alongside Sammy Davis Jr. on the National Mall. That's where they watched and listened to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. utter the words, I have a dream. And we're lucky now to be joined by actress and activist Rita Moreno. Rita, when, we think of, when you think about this day, what's the first thing that comes back to you? Oh, gosh, there's so many things that come to me. But uh, I was so thrilled to have been invited to be a part of this. And, I, I, you know, I have Harry Belafonte to thank. He decided that he wanted a Hollywood contingent uh, to be present there because he wanted Dr. King to know that uh, there were people in Hollywood of great conscience, deep conscience. And uh, I was one of those people. And uh, to this day, I will never, I, I get, Right now, I'm having goosebumps the size of doorknobs, just thinking about that amazing afternoon with Dr. King. I was about 10 feet away from that man. Can you imagine that? And what was the, what was the energy like? I mean, did, in the crowd, did you know that you were in the presence of history, that this was not just a march, but uh, something that would uh, change the course of American history? I knew that we were all making history that day, but here's something wonderful I want to tell you that very few people know about. I was, as I said, very close to Dr. King, about 10 feet away, maybe 12 feet away. And um, uh, Mahalia Jackson, who was a good friend of his, was sitting next to him. And when he came up to speak and came to the microphone, he started another speech. Nobody knows this except me and a few other people. And at that point, Mahalia said to him, Martin, tell him about the dream. Tell him about the dream, Martin. And he put away the talk he had planned. And that's where I have a dream came because she had heard him do that at one of their churches. Mm -hmm. Is that a story or is that a story? I was there. I heard her. Well, it's it. What's so great about that story, and and you know this as a performer, is there is there is what you prepare for, and then there is the jazz in the moment. There is the improvisation. There is the being and feeding off the energy. Absolutely, and it's. I'm so proud that I can tell this story today and with you, because very few people know this. If you look at the archives. You will find that the speech, his speech, did not have that phrase in it. It did not have that phrase in it. I have a dream. And Rita, what did you? So you the the it, the event takes place, and how? What what did you feel like after just after it happened? What was what was your reaction to what you'd been a part of? You know, my heart my heart was beating so thumping, so hard. And I met one of the most wonderful men in the world there, a fellow named Jimmy, who was one of the heads of uh, SNCC, Student Nonviolence Coordinating Committee. I can't remember his last name because I'm 91, and nouns and I have become bitter enemies. <laughs> Jimmy, he was one of the heads of SNCC. And uh, uh, we became friends and lovers for almost a year. After that, it was just an amazing, amazing experience. I'm so proud that Harry Belafonte thought of some of us in the Hollywood contingent. When you when you think about all that changed from that day and your own activism and the pace of change, what do you do? You think, oh my gosh, we've come such a long way, or do you think? Um, because obviously there is more to do to have, a, to have a just and equal society and to fulfill that dream. But give me your sense of, the, of, of the, how much has changed and how much has yet to be done. A lot has changed and nothing has changed. And I'm referring, of course, to the people who uh, are so filled with rage and hatred 
and uh, I'm 91 now, and I'm so sorry that I can't do demonstrations the way I used to then. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, it just absolutely, just absolutely sears my soul, the thought that there is so much hatred in this country. What the hell happened? What? Well, you can see I'm I'm polexed. I'm stunned. I'm so sad. I'm so filled with rage, too, that I'm so helpless. That's what my rage is about, that I'm so helpless right now. And thank goodness for people who have the courage to funny this wonderful, amazing woman. I mean, that's a very scary situation right now. That is so frightening to me. But she's going right ahead with what she knows is important. And uh, I wish I wish I would be around for another 20 years because, man, I'd get on my high horse and do some talking. <laughs> and, and Rita, one of the things that accompanies our current moment is the fear of violence. There was certainly plenty of that um, during the March on Washington. Were you, were you afraid? Were you worried that, that um, in this large gathering that, that something might happen, that in this moment? I guess what I'm hoping for is your recollections about just what, just what your sense of, uh, of fear was during that period of time in American life where so much was changing, where there was activism, but there was also a lot of people who didn't want to change at all. I was terrified. So was Jim, uh, oh gosh, who's the wonderful, J James Gardner, who was a friend of mine. He was guzzling Pepto-Bismol to beat all because he had an ulcer. And apparently it, it, uh, it was really bothering him. I was terrified that I would never work again. I was terrified that somehow I would get hurt, physically hurt, for being there either on that occasion or another occasion. Because I went to a number of uh, demonstrations and uh, after that, and I was terrified every moment. But, you know, at some point in life, one has to take responsibility. One has to be responsible to what is. And uh, I made a very, very big change in my life that very day for that very reason. In keeping with that, the idea of inspiration, which you know as an artist, you felt you've been responsible for inspiring so many people with your work and activism. How does that, for you, the connective power of inspiration, how does that work? When you, when you were there to be inspired and you were at the march, describe the power of, of, of inspiration as you've experienced it in your, in your career and going all the way back to that famous day. I think it's all about feeling uh, a newfound sense of responsibility. Uh, I don't think that I understood until I stood there on that Lincoln, Lincoln's uh, monument piece of, of, of uh, cement, just how important this was how important it was to to make yourself heard i think it's that's that's exactly what i had to do and it was only then when i turned around and saw that sea of humanity you know it's, it was unbelievable look at it i mean look at what you're showing now this is astonishing and i was looking at the sea of humanity at the pool that beautiful, beautiful pool with tons, I mean, just thousands and thousands of people holding up signs, holding up little fans, holding, I would see the glint of, of, of uh, thermoses that were brought to the scene because it was a boiling hot day, boiling hot. That's why when you see that picture of me with Sammy Davis Jr., 
we're both making faces because we were just roasting. Yeah. But it was all a question. I came home a different person, completely different person. And I have not changed since then. The final question, Rita, is what, what message, and I think you've pretty much already done it, but I'll try, but I'll ask it in a different way, which is what message would you send to young people today who are either marching for progress or who haven't considered it? For those who haven't considered it, you will not be complete until you take, take responsibility for yourself and for others who are less fortunate than you are. You really, really, as a young person, have an enormous obligation. You have to help, to seek to help people who are in a lesser position than you are. And it's not hard. In fact, you'll feel so good about yourself. You really, really will, in ways that you never dreamed. The wonderful actress and activist, Rita Moreno. Rita, thank you so much. We're very, very grateful for your time.